this, this demonstration, we're going to show you how to use GraphQL data source inside Visual Builder. So this is GraphQL, and this one specifically allows you to, for example, query animal characters using an ID. So you provide the ID, you provide the structure of the query you want, and you get the results over here. What we're going to do is we're going to use this in Visual Builder. Now, this is a web interface, and if you actually do an inspect here, and you'd look at the network when you execute a query, you'll see that we're basically issuing a call here to a URL of type post, and we're passing in a payload um, with the query, and the query is basically this structure over here. So because this is just a REST call or HTML call, we can use it also in Visual Builder. So let's copy, for example, this URL and go into Visual Builder. And in Visual Builder, we're going to create a new service connection. We'll define it by endpoint. We'll use a post operation, paste the URL, and we know that this returns information about one character, so we'll update the action hint to say get one. And we can give it a name. Like that. And then we can specify a body for the request. Now again, you can get this, for example, by looking at the payload over here. This is what we're passing. This is a formatted one. We want to see the actual source. So let's copy the source, which is this thing. We'll do a copy, go over here and paste it. So now we have the format of the body, which should allow us to go over and test our endpoint and get the results with information about our character. Let's save this as an example of a response. And this is how we defined our endpoint connecting to our Anima GraphQL. Next, we're going to create a little web application. Give it a name. And we're going to design the page that will invoke this REST endpoint. Um, we have a set of components. So what we want to do is we want to have an input text component where we can provide the ID of the character. Okay, so we'll populate this into a variable, call this one the new ID variable. Okay, and then we want to show information about this character. So we can go over here under services, we'll find our anima service with the endpoints. We have the get one endpoint. And if we drag and drop this endpoint over to our page, we get the option to create a dynamic or static detail page. Let's create a static detail page and we can basically choose which properties we want to show like that. Um, I'm gonna show all the properties for now. And uh, maybe actually we don't need two types of images. So let's just keep one image in here. Um, so that's the information we're going to show. Click Next and Finish. Now, initially, you're not going to get anything because you're getting an error when you're calling the REST endpoint, and that's because you're not passing in the needed information. So we need to pass in information, um, and to do that, we are going to define a new type from our endpoint based on the service we need something that maps us the request parameters that we need to pass in. So we'll create a request and we'll call this one animal request type, for example. All right, and now we need a variable of this type. So let's create a variable. We'll call it, for example, my request. And my request is going to be based on this animal request type we just created, like that. Now we need to set a value for it. Um, and we would want to set a value before we execute the query. When we drag the page uh, component over here, it created an action chain for us called load post. And this is actually the action chain that populates our data. And you can see over here, we're actually calling the rest endpoint. So before we're calling the rest endpoint, we would want to assign a variable to the variables that we were going to pass in. So we need to assign a variable to my request over here to the query. Okay. And we're going to use the new ID 
as the value that we're passing in here. Okay, but it's not just a new idea. We need the whole query syntax. So if we go back here and uh, we look at the parsed syntax, we can just copy this whole thing and paste it over here. Um, so it's two plus here. So now we have a long string over here and ID is actually what we want to modify here to be our parameter. So I'm going to copy our parameter, go over here and add our ID. So now we have one big string that defined our whole query. Um, it's static except for the ID that we use here. Okay, so we assign this to my request. When we're doing the rest call, we need to pass my request over to the body. So go over to the body, take the my request, drag and drop it over here. So that does the mapping. There's one more thing we need to do, which is we have this variable called ID, but initially it doesn't have any value. So maybe we want to have a default value here of one. Now, if we go back to the page designer, we get the information about our first character. Now we need to add an event on the ID field to fetch the next ID if we change this. So let's add an event here. We'll add a custom event on the value of this and we're going to use our action chain like that. So now if we go over and we type two, we get information about the second character. Now, of course, you can customize this page uh, to make it look a little bit different. And um, for example, if we look at the structure pane over here, um, we're inside the form. So we can, for example, set the form to have multiple columns, right? like two columns, like that. Make it maybe a little bigger. Okay. And instead of showing the image like that, we probably want to use something like an avatar, bring it, for example, to place it up here, make it an extra large one and map it to the same information about our character, specifically to the large image. All right, there we go. Can now remove this field, for example. So here we have a little application that allows us to fetch information and basically query using GraphQL information about anima characters and get the information in Visual Builder.